Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kindergarten Kickstart. If you are here today, chances are you are probably a kindergarten teacher or someone who works with kindergarten students or maybe a parent who has a kinder at home or maybe even a tutor. And regardless of why you're here, um, I am just glad that you are here. So this is a five-day series all about launching the year with the science of reading in mind. So really setting the foundation for your students and, and getting them in routines and consistent activities that are gonna help them grow their literacy skills. So I'm gonna walk you through what the series is going to be throughout the week. This is the only recorded session that will not be a live session. Um, after today, the recordings will be recording from the live sessions. So today we are going to talk with Courtney, who was a kindergarten teacher. We taught together for two years at my school, and then she went on to a new district to become a literacy coach like me, and I'm just so proud of her, and I can't wait for her journey to begin. She is Orton Gillingham trained, and she was just such a delight to work with. She truly cares about students. You can tell that from the minute she wa you walk into her door, um, and she was just very organized and was able to really just jump right in and learn all the things when it came to the science of reading. So she's going to be with us today and we're going to be talking about kindergarten, um, our, our alphabet quest, which is how we introduce letter sounds at the beginning of the year. So we introduce all 26 letters in 26 days. And that might seem crazy, but we always go back and make sure that we pull in that review piece for them. So the reason we do that is because kids come to us from all different walks of life. And some kids come to us in kindergarten and they have had preschool. They have some knowledge of letter sounds. They may be able to write their name. And then we have the other end of the spectrum where kids come to us and they really don't have a literacy, a strong literacy foundation at all. Um, and so what we want to do in those 26 days is we want to, number one, support the students that have some literacy knowledge, we want to make sure that that foundation is strong for them. So we want to make sure that if they went to preschool, that they learned how to write their letters properly. We want to make sure that they learned how to articulate their sounds correctly. And then on the other end, if they don't have that exposure, if they haven't had that exposure, we want to level the playing field for those kids. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to walk you through what that looks like. On day two, we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to dive. We're talk about letter, letter formation today, but we're going to really dive deep on in that tomorrow, on day two. And Kendall is a kindergarten teacher that is currently still a kindergarten teacher with me, and she is also Orton Gillingham trained, and she is. Um, I call her kind of the Cinderella of kindergarten because you walk in her room and it's just this even tone all the time. She's very calm. She is very kind hearted. The kids really, um, when, when you see the kids with her, you know that they just love being in her classroom, but she also has a very good kindergarten um, writing routine that I think you all should hear about and see how she does. So I'm excited for her to, to share that with you as well. So that's what we're gonna do on day two. Day three, you're gonna hear from Laurel. Laurel and I taught kindergarten for two years together. She moved to another district and she's um, still teaching kindergarten. So she's still very much in um, the kindergarten realm of things. She is gonna be sharing about these phonics toolkits and um, what she puts in them at the beginning of the year and how she utilizes those in whole group and small group and throughout the day. So I'm excited for you to hear from Laurel as well. On day four, we're going to talk about scheduling your literacy block. We're going to talk about what that looks like. We're going to, after we've done this, this 26 days, we've built those routines. We've built some consistent um, activities that students are familiar with. Then we're kind of ready to start moving them into small group, but that can be a really hard transition. Um, and so figuring out how to fit everything in your schedule is really important. So this is Dana Harrison. She is, we taught kindergarten 
kinder she taught kindergarten at my school for um, over 15 years before moving to first grade and we taught together for about eight years and she's like the OG of kindergarten she's the one that we all go to still if we have questions she's the one we go to when we need organizational help all the things. She's the one that we we go to. Um, she teaches first grade now, but she um, is still very much a mentor and a leader in kindergarten. And so she will be with us on day four. Day five, we're going to hear from Valerie. Valerie is a kindergarten teacher. She's taught kindergarten and first grade. She moved away. She left us last year and um, moved to another area in the state with her husband who got a new job. So we really miss her, but she is still teaching kindergarten and she has so much to share. So she's going to talk about some tips and tricks tricks for transitioning into small group. And I'm going to share some tips and tricks with you for transitioning into small group as well. So that's just kind of an overview of our, um, our days together. And so we'll have about a 45 minute session where I share with you all the things. And then that last 15 minutes, our teachers are going to pop on and they're going to be there to answer your questions and help you through because being a literacy coach, I am all in with literacy, but there is just something to be said about having the opportunity to talk to teachers who are in the trenches with you. And so I am, I feel so blessed that all of my kindergarten teachers, past and present, were willing to just come on and be a part of this and be here to support you. So I'm very much looking forward to it. So let's move on. And we're going to talk about, oh, I forgot to tell you in the hub, you can also grab all of your resources. So if you're watching this video, chances are you're in the hub. So if you're in the hub, then that means you signed up for the whole week and you can grab all of these resources, plus the slides that I'm going to share with you today. You can grab those um, inside the page that you're already on. So I am excited for you um, to download those and get, get planning. All right, let's talk about Alphabet Quest. So Alphabet Quest is a program. It's an intensive five-week program that we designed. A little background for you. When the pandemic hit, I was asked to leave my role as a literacy coach for one year and teach a K-1 or 2 classroom to reduce the numbers of students that we had because we had to have them, you know, spaced out. So I ended up in kindergarten and as a literacy coach, you know, you walk in, you see all the things and you think, okay, this is going great, right? You're, you're looking at data. I was a new literacy coach. I really hadn't, didn't have my footing completely um, at that point. And so I was excited to teach kindergarten. I now call that my sabbatical because when I went into kindergarten, what I realized was that about in Jan like in January, my kids knew all their letters. They knew all their sounds. They could rhyme. And that was it. So in the program that we used, our letter sounds and our letter names and sounds were one silo. The phonemic awareness was another silo and they never came together. So here I was in January with kids who were not reading. And I, I know now what a huge mistake that was. And so that's kind of when I, when that happened, I thought to myself, here we are in January, these kids should be reading. What are we doing wrong? What are the gaps in our program? And I'll tell you what they were. The two were siloed and they were not, this, they were not combined into phonics instruction, but they also spent way too much time teaching letters and sounds in isolation. So we went something like this, the scope and sequence that we followed, we taught all the uppercase letters, then we taught all the lowercase letters. Then we circled back around and we taught the sounds. Okay. So I'm not very good at math, but I have my calculator here. So let's just say 26 letters in the alphabet times three, because we did three cycles of that. That's 78 days. And we're only in school 180. So if I take out 180 uh, roughly 180. That's we only had 102 days left to teach those kiddos how to read. It just took too long. It was too much. So that's kind of how Alphabet Quest came to be. We were like, how can we efficiently, systematically, and explicitly teach students their letter names and their sounds and 
in combination with phonemic awareness so that sooner we can we can put together the two and help them learn to start reading and really do some explicit phonics instruction with them, right? So we wanted to, to pull in some daily routines that pulled it, they were interactive, engaging, but they also pulled in that cumulative review so that they were constantly being exposed to those letters at a rapid pace. And so that's kind of how Alphabet Quest came to be. What you see here, I'm going to share with you at the end is our celebration for the end of Alphabet Quest. All right. So I've already shared a little bit with you about our vision. We want to, we wanted to level the playing field. We wanted to expedite this letter sound process. We wanted to do it more efficiently. We wanted to build in that cumulative review. And so then we set out to create something that would work because the program that we had was not working for our kids. So we worked together to create the, this alphabet quest and we put a lot of work into it and we've seen a lot of really good results. So I'm excited to share with you about it. All right. So don't shoot the messenger, but we really need to rethink letter of the week. There's no research to support teaching one letter a week. And if I sat here and I did the math again, 26 weeks of letter names and sounds is too much. It's too much without adding in that phonics instruction, right? So we, what we want to do is we want to accelerate that reading. We want to use best practices. What does the research say? The research says that kids can actually learn three to four letter sounds a week, right? It also tells us, Louisa Motes also tells us that when kids have 10 to 12 letter sounds under their belt, they are able, and they have that, that blending and segmenting piece, they're able to put the two together and they can begin reading words, which is pretty special if you think about it, right? So teaching more than one letter a week is going to help us build strong foundation and it's going to increase engagement. I don't know about you, but if I had to learn about the letter B all week long in kindergarten, I think I'd probably be pretty bored. All right, so let's talk about the structure of Alphabet Quest. So we divided it up we dedicated one letter per day for five weeks, um, six, six, um, we added a couple of, one letter at the end and I'll talk to you about that. And we're following a specific scope and sequence. So we included things like visual drills, vowel intensives, morning messages that incorporated that phonological awareness piece. We introduced the new letter. We gave them opportunities to practice, to apply that. We, we taught them correct letter formation and articulation. Okay, so getting started, we're thinking about, okay, we're gonna do Alphabet Quest. We have to figure out how to get started. So we broke it up into three different pieces here. The planning piece, implementation, and analyzing. So when you're planning, you really want to think about a couple of things. So before you can start printing all the things and making all the lesson plans, you really need to stop and take time to ask yourself a couple of questions. You need to ask yourself, how long is my literacy block? Where can I fit in 30 minutes for five weeks for Alphabet Quest? And can you choose a time when your students are fresh? Courtney, who's going to talk to us in a little bit, um, the years that we taught together, kindergarten had Encore first thing in the morning. So they came back to us and they were toast. And so, you know, really, ideally, first thing in the morning, it would be really great if you could pull your kids, have your morning meeting, and then go right into Alphabet Boot Camp with them. Um, and so that's something that you really should think about. And chances are, if you have a, a small group time in your schedule, you're not really doing small group right now. You know, we're not going to do small group the first five weeks of school because you're teaching kids routines. That would be a great time to go ahead and pull in Alphabet Quest. So after you've decided a time to do it, then what you want to do is you want to gather the resources that you'll need. So you're going to need the Alphabet Quest slides. You're going to need student resources, which you have access to all of these inside the hub, your parent newsletters, which I will share with you later, and then you also have a printable version of your phonics toolkit. So those are the things that you will want to gather as you begin the planning process. Then you're going to want to create your plan. Now, I don't know about you, but I am not 
a fan of scripted programs. And that's because I just feel like as teachers, like we became teachers for a reason and we really love what we do. And when we take away our creativity and we have to read from a script, it kills the joy for, for teaching, but it also kills the joy for learning, right? So I'm not so much a scripted lesson plan girl, but what I did do for you and what I did do for my teachers is I gave you an overview of what the week might look like, just so that you have something as you are creating a lesson plan for that week. So those are also going to be in the file for you. So the next thing you have to do is you really have to think through your routines. And I, I tell my teachers this at the beginning of the year. One of the first things I do as a literacy coach is I go into their classroom and we talk through a lot of different things. We talk through where are you going to house your literacy stations? How are you going to set your desks up so that students can move freely throughout the classroom? Where is your small group table going to be? Is your small group table going to be in an area that you have a view of everything that's happening in the classroom? Where are you going to put your carpet? Where are you going to gather with your students? Where's your sound wall going to go? So these are all things that we have discussions about, but if we, if we rein it in a little bit and we start thinking about just this alphabet quest, you want to ask yourself a few questions. How will your students grab their toolkits each day? Where will they sit? What are the expectations during this time? Are you going to have them up and moving around? Are you gonna have them dancing to an alphabet song? Are you gonna have them um, giving, a, are you gonna have Anita Archer in your mind and think about how everybody responds? If it rhymes, thumbs up. If it rhymes, if it doesn't rhyme, thumbs down. If it rhymes, everyone stand up. If it doesn't rhyme, everyone sit down. How are you gonna pull in that piece, right? That active participation. And how will you use any support staff you have in your room to support you during that time. So those are all questions that you really just need to take a few minutes and think about when you start planning. Okay, so now we've got the planning under control. It's time to implement, right? And so we are going to remember a few things. We are going to make sure that we are consistent and we stick to our routine. And I'm gonna show you how to do this. So I'm gonna share with you the routine that we use. And then um, what I will do is I will walk you through the slides actually like in per like so that you can see what they look like on the screen. So we always start with a visual drill, a warm up. And so what you see here are just slides with consonants and vowels on them. We will, um, this cumulatively builds. So if I'm introducing the letter B, for example, then tomorrow when I introduce the letter M, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have B ready, right? And so they're going to, I'm just going to add the previously taught letter to the visual drill. I'm going to mix them up. I'll show you how to do that with the slide sorter. And we start the day with that. Then we move into a vowel intensive. Now, you have a couple options for your vowel intensives. I have um, these vowel sticks, which Laurel, who is going to talk to us about the, um, the phonics kit on Wednesday, she loves using these sticks. They're great. Um, you, put, you glue them on, you lay them down, and then you pull up. So I would say, all right, the sound is ah. They all hold up the O. They say O says ah and then lay it back down. Again, you're gonna have to build routines regardless of what you do. So Courtney, who's gonna talk with us later, did a really good job with this because she would have them lay them out, A-E-I-O-U, hands in your lap, okay? So their hands had to go in their lap. And then when it was time to choose their vowel, she would say, the sound is ah, and then she would point, go. And they would pick it up. A says ah. So it's all about building that routine and that consistency piece. Now, if you're not a vowel stick girl, these are just vowel strips. You can add little mini chips to your phonics kit and you're good to go. They can slide the chip right on there. Okay, then we move into the phonological awareness piece. So I want us to take some time here because I want to rec I want you. I want to make sure that I, I share with you that research tells us that those larger units of phonemic awareness aren't really where we should be spending our time. We should be spending our time at the phoneme level. We should be thinking about blending, 
segmenting and phoneme isolation. But I want you to understand why you see rhyming here, why you're going to see syllables here, why you're going to see onset and rhyme in these slides. And the reason is because if you say to a kid as they walk in your classroom in kindergarten, if you say, okay, the word is k at, what's my word? Chances are 75% of the kids are going to say something like elephant or chicken or something that doesn't even make sense because they don't understand how to play with sounds. So the first thing that I do, let's say I'm pulling a second grader and I'm having them, I recognize that they have some phonemic awareness deficits. The first place I'm going to start is can they segment a word? Can they blend a word? If they can't segment or blend to the individual level, I am going to take a step back. I'm going to say the word. So if I say the word is k at, and they're not able to do that, then I'm going to say, okay, listen carefully. The word is k at. If they're unable to do that, I'm going to say, let's try a new word, pumpkin. So now I've gone individual sound level, onset rhyme level, syllable level. If they can't do that, then I'm going to go to the compound word level. And I'm going to say football. And they're going to say football, right? So you don't want to spend a lot of time in these larger units, but sometimes kids need you to back up until they understand what it is that you're asking them to do. So we thought what a great time to just go ahead and front load this for them so that by the time we get to the individual phoneme piece on the scope and sequence, they're ready to rock and roll, right? So we do rhyming, syllables, onset rhyme, compound words. You'll see all of that. And as we get to the end of boot camp, before we start switching them over into small group, then we will start working at that individual phoneme level. So Louisa Motes said, you know, 10 to 12. So about that time is when you can kind of start to see in the alphabet quest slides where we start introducing um, some more in, at the individual level. So this just kind of supports them. And just one more note on this phonological awareness piece. You will notice that in some of the slides, it'll say, okay, boys and girls, let's stand up and we're gonna step out syllables. So what that means is kids stand up, they push in their chairs and I say, okay, I'm gonna say a word. And for every syllable you hear, you're going to take one step. We're gonna make one big circle around the room. And when you make it back to your seat, you sit down. So I'll say pumpkin and they'll all step pumpkin and then they freeze, right? Build that routine, building that consistency piece. And then I'll say, Okay, um, umbrella, umbrella. And they're making their way back around the room to sit in, then they'll go back and they'll sit in their chair. So this can be as, as active as you want it to be, which might be good for them, right? We wanna get them up and moving as much as possible. Okay, now it's time. We've had our warm up. We have worked on phonological awareness. Now it's time to introduce the letter for the day. So let's introduce the letter, right? So what I'm gonna do is before I show this slide, I'm gonna say, listen carefully. Basketball, B, bathtub. What do you hear at the beginning? And they're all gonna say, B, 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 right? So here's your time. If they say, B, here's your time to correct it. Actually, the sound is B. This is a stop sound, right? We, it, we, it pops and it stops, b, right? We don't add any sound at the end. It's just b. Everybody practice, b, right? Good job. This is the letter B. This is the uppercase B and this is the lowercase B. And B makes the b sound. And then you're gonna ask them, look at these lips. What are, what are our lips do when we make that sound? They come together. We push a little air out and it stops, right? So then you're going to get in your, your phonics tool kit. You're going to grab the, have them grab the mirror. They're going to hold it up and they're going to practice watching their lips make the sound. They're going to practice, right? And now you've introduced it, given them lots of opportunities. And now we're going to do a sound search. So we're going to see if we can find all the words that begin with the 
sound, and I'm going to have you come up and circle it on the active board. Now, I've included this. This is in your supplemental student resources. This is an additional activity that you could do that mimics the one you do in whole group if you're looking for them to do something um, in small group or maybe with a, an interventionist or um, an instructional assistant. You have it here, okay? So they'll come up and they'll say bag, and I'll say, that's right, that's a bag. What do we hear at the beginning, everyone? B that's right. What sound does B make? B right? And so now I'm going to start front loading that phonemic awareness piece. I'm going to say it's a bag bag. That's right. It's a bag. Everyone do it with me. Bag bag. Great job. And so we'll go through and do all of the letter, all of the pictures that start with that b sound. Then we want for them to be able to apply it, and we also want them to have some ownership in what they're learning. So some teachers in my building get anchor charts and create anchor charts. Some teachers prefer this digital version, which is what you have, um, and they will ask for student input. Can you think of any other letters that sound like b? Let me hear what other letters can you, what other words can you think of that begin with the b sound, right? Oh. Brian, Brian, oh, yours is a little tricky, Brian, because yours has that r sound right after it, but we hear the b, 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 Ryan, b, r, I, and Brian. Yes, let me draw Brian. And so you're getting that input, right? And so this, again, is another supplemental activity for students. If you want them to work on something independently, this would be what you would do with them in whole group. I had teachers who would do the whole group piece and have kids draw um, as they were doing it. But we all know that like even in kindergarten, we had I had to teach my kids how to draw things. They had to learn how to draw shapes and to learn how to draw a circle to be able to make a head for a body. Right. So that's up to you how you want to handle that. I could also see pulling out some magazines and having them find pictures that begin with the b sound. Um, if you have the small group letter sound bundle, you can use the um, picture sorts from that and have them just glue those on. You could do a lot of different things with that independently. Okay, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on letter formation only because it's what we're gonna talk about in day two. But letter formation is so, so important. So it is just as important as letter sound automaticity, letter formation fluency is important to you. And I want to just make this quick little note. We're gonna talk about it tomorrow. Decide what your letter formation is going to be and stick to it. If you are a kindergarten teacher and you have an SLP coming to your room who's helping. If you have a special education teacher who's coming in your room, pushing in, an interventionist, an instructional assistant, I don't care who they are. If they're coming in your room and they're teaching letter formation to your students, you need to hand them the letter chants that you use and say, these are the letter chants that we use. And this is how I'm teaching kids to form these letters because we don't wanna confuse them. We want one way of doing it, okay? We'll talk more about that tomorrow. So the first thing we do is we ask them to put up two fingers and they're going to draw it in the air. Okay. So B for us is straight stick down, bounce up and around. Okay. So I'm going to give them a little bit of guidance. I'm going to say, okay, straight stick down, bounce up to that dotted line and around straight stick down, bounce up to that dotted line and around. And then they're going to practice. So they're going to practice writing on the table with those two fingers with their hands they're going to practice writing on their knee. If they're on the carpet, they can practice writing on the carpet. But the ultimate goal is to have them work on pencil to paper. So what we do is what you see here is we just have a sentence strip. You guys have access to this in um, your resources for your phonics toolkit. But what we do is we just print sentence strips on cardstock we laminate them and we stick an expo marker in there and that's how they practice every day. Okay, but then we have to give them lots of practice to pencil to paper, right? So they get this alphabet quest card and we write their name on it and we laminate it. And so as they work through this letter formation, we'll hole punch this, right? It's all about success in the early, early weeks, right? We're gonna be working on that. Louisa Moat says that I listened to her speak at Big Sky Literacy Summit in Montana last year. And she said, and it shocked me, 
she said that in kindergarten and first grade, we should be spending a minimum of 10 to 15 minutes a day of explicit and direct letter formation, handwriting, not just narrative writing, but this is how we form the letters. And so for this initial alphabet quest, it's all about the fun. It's all about the punches. They're getting them, right? Unless we have some major problems, we're going we're gonna to check those off once they get them. But what you do is you give them opportunities to practice here, and then they work through it on their own. And if it is, if it's, you know, straight stick down, they pick it up and they bounce away over that dotted line, they, they can need to erase it and do it again, right? Okay. We will talk more about that tomorrow. And then we want to extend this. And so what you guys have access to are these parent newsletters. They're editable so that you can, I know everybody has a different scope and sequence and I understand that. So you can edit this however you need to. Um, but these are letters that go home to parents. It gives parents a little bit of information about what you're learning for the week, okay? Then down here, it gives that language focus. We're working on rhyming words. Here are some things that you can do at home, gives them some tips and tricks for practicing rhyming words at home. This is our letter focus for the week. This is some, these are some pictures that represent it. These are, this is the mouth formation for forming this letter. Um, and here is uh, how we practice writing this letter. We also put in here, you know, we don't want our parents to be undoing what we're teaching. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we tell them, hey, guess what? M doesn't say M. M says M. M says M. Okay, so we want to make sure we're giving them enough to be supportive, but not too much. And so that's what these parent newsletters do. And then we send these home too, like the week after we've practiced um, BMRSA, we'll send these home as a homework practice. So they read them, the sounds, b, m, a, m, a, a, b, m, a, m, b, a. And then they practice writing. So those are great things that you can send home. And then my favorite part is Alphabet Boot Camp, uh, not Alphabet Boot Camp, I'm sorry, the Alphabet Parade. And I love it. So what we did is after we got through all 26 letters, we went to Kroger and we get we asked them to donate some paper bags for us. So we asked them to donate these Kroger bags and we turned them into vests. So if you, I'll do a video demonstration for you, but if you turn it upside down um, and so Kroger is kind of upside down, you cut up the middle and then you cut a circle for the neck and then you can cut around for the arms. And so we made these cute little vests. Then what we did is we sent them home. We asked parents to help, um, either print out pictures that began with the letter that we had assigned to the student. And here's another note. If you have um, a big kindergarten classroom, then you can pretty much cover all the letters. We didn't really cover letters like X because it was, there aren't a lot of, of words that begin with that X sound. Um, but if you have a smaller class, you might want to talk with your teacher partner and say, hey, I'm going to do like A through M if you want to do N through Z or whatever, so that all the all the, the letters are covered. So the kids could print pictures out and glue them on. They could cut pictures from magazines. They could um, draw the pictures um, on there. And so we gave parents about a week to do that. And anyone who had not done that, we helped them do that at school. We had one of our instructional assistants help them pull them out, help them do that. And so they all had these cute little vests. And then what we did is we ask, we invited parents and we ask all of the kids in the building, we're K-5 building, we ask them all to come out and line the hallway and sit against the wall. And then we had the kids come and parade through with their um, alphabet vests just to celebrate like they had done something really amazing. Like they had learned all of these letters and it was really exciting. And it was exciting for them to really shine. And, and they were so proud. And what I love most about it is like everybody in the school participated and we would walk through the hallways and the kids would sing the alphabet song. Like the older kids would sing it for them. And it just 
you could just see how happy it made all our little kinder babies. And it was almost like a, like a welcome to the school, right? Because it was their first interaction with all of, all of the kids. So it was very, very special. So that's just an idea to celebrate. So after the, the alphabet quest, what you really need to do is you have to ask yourself, you wanna look at the data, you wanna compare what letter names and sounds do kids know prior to the alphabet quest? What do they know now? Did it work? And I will tell you that we have seen tremendous growth in our kids. We've seen it in their handwriting. We've seen it in their letter sound automaticity and, and their phonemic awareness skills. Because now after this five week period, we're ready to start transitioning and going into small group and we're gonna hit it again, but it's it, they all have that good level playing field. They all have that strong foundation. And while we were teaching them, we were also teaching them those routines. So they're ready to go when we move it into more of a small group setting. Setting. And then talk to your teacher friends. What worked well? What might you do differently, right? If you don't want to use a Kroger bag, you can use maybe a, a poster board or you can cut out a circle and hang it from yarn and they can decorate that. So think about things like that, like what worked, what didn't work. Talk to your teacher friends. And then I am going to stop talking and I'm going to have Courtney come on and she's going to answer questions live that you guys had in the, um, in the session. And she's going to answer all those questions and we're just going to have a really good conversation. So I wanted to record this first session for you, um, not live yeah. because I wanted the opportunity to share with you all the things that are coming. Tomorrow, day two will be a live recording. Day three, four, and five will be a live recording. And I hope that you will be able to join us. If you're not able to join us live, then there will be that recording in the hub here for you. So I am going to pull this, I'm gonna stop recording and I'm gonna bring Courtney on and have her answer any questions that you guys might have. <laughs>